Okay, everybody, how y'all doing? Um, this article I'm bringing to you is a little bit late because it came out. Oh wow, it don't have a date to it. It says it published yesterday, but I man, yesterday now it's like a couple days ago. <laughs> anyway, I got tired of the green screen because I had to pull it up. <laughs> I got to do some extra shit. Anyway, I just want to do the fucking video and be done with it. Anyway, so this is about Cyberpunk 2077 2.0 update. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos videos about this this game and it seems to me uh, out of all the videos this this shit feels like they ever did shit to it i swear or maybe i don't know it's a meme it's a whole big meme i guess I'm not sure. Anyway, so Cyberpunk, one and only expressing, expansion, Phantom Liberty is coming out on September 26th. It was a couple days. Oh, shit. Um, but the 2.0 update, which began some pretty significant system changes to the RPG that has been getting uh, incremental changes since its um, disastrous launch back in 2020. Coming out for free for all players on September 21st. Oh wow. It is enough to salvage the game. Something might not be salvageable. I sat down with federal staff writers uh, Claire Jackson to talk about it. <clears throat> And after we both spent several hours with the new changes, our conclusion, it might not fix everyone's problems with Cyberpunk 2077, but it's, it is the mechanical realization of what the game probably always should have been. Kenneth Shepard said, Claire, I have one question for you, and just simple one that is, isn't loaded or complicated at all. Is Cyberpunk 27, fuck, is Cyberpunk 2077 good now? Claire says, I've always loved this game. It was a special place for me. So it always it is all to her. It always been good. Just with the big asterisks. I think Phantom Liberty, um, Liberty really makes the asterisks hard to see. The game is in very, um, the game is in a very different place now. Uh, so Kenneth said, honestly, I went from a begrudging respect disdain toward it when I played it at launch to it also holding a very a very special place for me when I uh, we played it last year even then that was before the 2.0 update and I think while I certainly had my issues with the writing its worldview and the myriad of other problems I always thought that thing that always kept it from being good or great was a lot of systemic issues because there was an uh, argument to be made that even the most detestable parts of Cyberpunk 2077, writing was part of the larger commentary, and whether or not it holds up the scrutiny is separate discussion, but systematically, Cyberpunk 2077 just felt like the most unremarkable RPG, adorned with some uh, pretty neon lights, great characters, and some pretty strong thematic broad strokes. I think I'm on record somewhere as saying that sort of big sweeping changes to the way the game operates nothing was going to make Cyberpunk 2077 good but also think I said that assuring, um, su assuming excuse me, we've never get something like the 2.0 update and I gotta say this is exactly what the game needed. And then Claire says, oh, I, I'm in total agreement. Also, always happy to talk about what I loved in this game. And the weird way is narrative and even buggy stale resonates. Hold on. What the fuck? I, I can't read. <laughs> Oh, the real ray is his narrative and even buggy state resonates with me but you're right there are fundamental issues that goes beyond just bugs those issues have been very well documented and they're totally valid and for a good chunk of cyberpunk's core problems there are no fixing them without making a new game the good news is that the new update i think is like half a new game maybe a bit more um the new mechanics really make 
make for fresh experience. Oh, that was it. Oh, shit. Okay. So, okay. This is what I think about Cyberpunk 77, all right? So, when I played it, I think, oh, yeah, it was in the year 2020. I played it buggy as hell. I played it on the PS4 because at that time, I didn't have the PS5 or the PS5 didn't come out yet or I'm not sure. No, no, no. The PS5 came out in the, like the Christmas season. I bought my PS5 a year later. So, anyway, I played it buggy as shit. I still had a good time. In my experience of the game, the, uh, the, the PS4 version, I got pissed off because sometimes my game would crash and I was in the middle of a mission. But only one or two experiences of that, of the whole entire of the gameplay that I was playing. But um, it, but when the, let's jump forward. When I was playing PS5 version, that was like a totally different game than what I played on the PS4 version. It was like they was priming the game. They was actually, they was prepping the game for the PS5. But we, all of us had the PS4 system and they was like, just, just go half ass on the PS4 system because the people, the bosses at the CD Projekt Red was too arrogant enough to even focus on the PS4 port and they put all their energy on the next gen consoles, the Xbox Series X and the PS5 and the PC. They, they just, somebody fucked up. <laughs> and I played the PC version I was like, oh shit, this, this game is way smoother than the PS5. I'm like, holy fuck. So I, I then, then again, I think this update it's going to fix the subtle bugs, game mechanics. They're still there. It's still going to run like the same game, but they're going to put most of their focus on the DLC, um, which is going to be free. And I think it's free for everybody that purchased the game, like, uh, the, the base model of the game. So am I excited? Yeah, I want to see it. Um, so I burped on the mic because I blessed it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for um, this game the dlc you know see what kind of progress that they did and i was like you heard it from claire i think that's her hold on what's her name yeah claire in in this article here um just live fucking changes <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a commentator. I says I'm just a person that talks shit. Anyway, that's it. I got peace out.